My friend, if you're struggling finding, vetting, training, and managing virtual team members for your real estate business, I have the solution for you. Call Magicians is the premier virtual assistant company in the real estate industry. And basically what they'll do is allow you to focus on closing more deals and doing the things you love while they handle the work for you. Head over to callmagicians.com and see if you're a good fit to work together. And make sure you use the promo code Flip Empire for a 20% discount off your startup fee. And by the way, the owner's a friend of mine and shares tons of value, gives a lot of useful tips on episode 540. So check it out at flipempire.com forward slash 540. You're listening to Flip Empire, the show committed to helping real estate entrepreneurs who want to build their empire without sacrificing their life. Your success and freedom starts now with your host, Alex Pardo. What's going on, Flip Empire community? This is Alex Pardo, and this is officially the latest I have ever recorded a podcast episode. It is just past midnight, and uh, we have wrapped up our third day of our Ascend Mastermind Retreat. We have one more day, and uh, quite honestly, I cannot believe I have the energy to record this podcast, and uh, I'm doing so because I got a little bit behind the eight ball. I usually, uh, you know, batch record these podcast episodes at least a week or two in advance, and uh, I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to just kind of recap uh, some of the takeaways. One, one of the themes from our mastermind retreat here at Ascend, uh, a, a lot of our, a lot of our members, a lot of our community are, are really just growing and building amazing organizations. And part of that process is finding the right salespeople. You know, what, what do they look like? What are the qualities and characteristics that they have? Where do you find them? Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to break down through the predictive index. Now, if you've never heard of predictive index, it is a, uh, it is a fantastic tool. In fact, it's a tool that now I, I, I never, whenever I'm hiring someone, I always use it. So our, our, one of our team members for the self storage facility I just closed on in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, our, 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 my personal assistant, you know, she took the, the predictive index, my boots on the ground for the facility. She took the predictive index. So fantastic tool. If you go to predictiveindex.com, you can learn more about it, but I'm going to go ahead in this podcast. I'm going to break down through the predictive index. I have the ideal what is a what is the predictive index for the ideal sales candidate? So if you're looking to hire an acquisitions manager, a dispositions manager, if you think in the future you may be looking to hire a person, uh, I'm going to go ahead and break down through the predictive index. What exactly do you want to find and look for? Um, I'm sorry. What do you want to look for? Number two, where do you find them? Um, one of our members, uh, Brennan Reed, shared a fantastic resource for finding awesome salespeople. Uh, another one of our members, Brandon Barnes, shared a, another resource, and, and I want to go ahead and uh, reveal those. I, I know they're they're cool with me kind of sharing this with you guys. So um, these are some some creative, great places where you can find uh, hungry, ambitious salespeople for your organization. I want to talk a little bit about managing them, and then I want to share with you some tips and some hiring resources. So with that being said, um, let me actually pull up the predictive index here, and essentially. What you're looking for is predictive index has these different categories and the ideal, the, 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 the target profile for an acquisitions or dispositions manager is a, a based on predictive index, a captain, a maverick and a persuader. Now, what is a captain? A captain is a problem solver who likes change and innovation while controlling the big picture. A maverick is an innovative outside of the box thinker who is in un, who is undaunted by failure. And a persuader is a risk taker, so socially poised and motivating team builder. So what does that actually mean in, in English, in layman's terms? So um, salespeople's guys, they're, they're proactive, right? They take initiative. They're competitive. They are, are driven to get things done. And generally speaking, they have a positive response to pressure. Uh, what, else do the, what, what else are some of the qualities and characteristics of a really, really good salesperson? They are quick to connect. They're fluent. Uh, sometimes they're fast talking, although not always. Uh, they're very lively and enthusiastic, just positive, optimistic overall. So um, when, when you think about an ideal salesperson, you want somebody who is, uh, is, is motivated by money. They're motivated for growth and they're motivated. They're not comfortable 
per se with a salary. Uh, generally speaking, if not most of the time, they don't want a ceiling on their income ability. So you want somebody who's very competitive, somebody who is a problem solver, somebody who's uh, th they're results oriented, right? They're focused on solutions, not problems. They have a, a sense of urgency about them and they're, they're very quick to move and act. So uh, that's what a, what a really, really good salesperson looks like. And, and I can continue to go further. I could talk about how a salesperson, uh, they strive for accountability. They see the value in accountability and actually want you, when you manage them, to hold them accountable. They understand the value of, of certain hitting metrics and KPIs and being, uh, you know, being measured by those KPIs. They, they, they see the value in that. So um, that's what a great salesperson looks like. Now, I want to kind of move on and talk about where do you find them? Okay, where do you find a really, really good salesperson? So salesperson, a salesperson can be found many, many different places. Um, I have never done this, but one of the things that was shared today in our Send Mastermind was uh, visiting car dealerships on Saturdays. You know, get there really early, visit several car dealerships. Uh, many car dealerships and these salespeople, they make a big uh, percentage of their income on the weekends. Why? People are out looking for, for cars and uh, one of the things that's interesting that I shared when this was brought up is that, you know, if you go out visiting car dealerships and you have no interest in buying a car and you find yourself kind of thinking twice about buying a car and you're like, maybe I should get this. Chances are you might be talking to the right salesperson. So, uh, you know, talk to them. How do they follow up with you? How do they communicate with you? How do they sell? Are they are they high pressure kind of snake snake oil salesman type of approach? Or do they ask a lot of questions? Is it consultative selling? Do they do they build rapport? Do they get to know you? So uh, visiting car dealerships on Saturdays is uh, and Sundays is a great place to recruit salespeople. Uh, give them your phone number. You know, one of our members, Brandon, actually talked about uh, creating a call rail number so that you can turn it off in the future if they just get annoying and they're calling you too many times. So maybe you don't give them your cell phone, but you give them another number that you can track and that you can turn off whenever. So how do they communicate with you via text, verbally? Do they send you any direct mail? Uh, so you could potentially find the next salesperson that can two, three, four, five, ten 10x your business. Um, and that's one of the things that's very interesting about the real estate business, especially if you're listening to this and you're a wholesaler uh, or, or you're a volume-based business, transactional business. Oftentimes, you are one key hire away from having a completely different business. So where's another place that you can look for great salespeople? Timeshares, people that are, have, have been trained in door-to-door -door sales, right? So uh, I, I know a buddy of mine that got, you know, he, he kind of, uh, he, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He learned sales by selling Cutco, by going door-to-door -door selling knives. Uh, one of our members talked about how uh, he sold copy paper, believe it or not, back in the day. That's how he learned sales. And if you can sell copy paper, you can pretty much sell anything. Uh, so timeshares, most people hate timeshares. And, uh, you know, one of our members talked about how he hired uh, one of the top time uh, timeshare salespeople that had been with the company for 10 years. And if you are with a, a, a timeshare company and you're successfully selling timeshares for that period of time, you know how to sell. You know how to build rapport. You know how to how to ask questions and, and, and get people to take the action you want. So uh, where else can you find good salespeople? Well, they're all around you. Uh, your network, your email list, your friends and family, your social network. So I should have started the episode by saying that you have to be very, very clear on exactly not just the qualities and characteristics, which I outlined through Predictive Index, but you want to outline and have an avatar for an ideal acquisitions person or dispositions person, somebody who fits the culture and core values of your team. So once you get clear on that, flap your gums, talk to friends and family, leverage social media, send emails to your list, let them know exactly who you're looking for. And I can tell you from experience that most of the time, my best hires have been through my network or my network's network, okay? So that's where to find them. Now, let me kind of share with you some tips here. Um, I don't particularly like hiring people that come with a real estate background. You know, this was a topic of conversation and I agree with 
with the sentiment that was shared in the room is that what I have found is that when you hire somebody that already has been trained in real estate, they kind of tend to have a know-it-all mentality. However, when you hire just a, a naturally good salesperson, they're eager to learn. They're ambitious. They, they, they want to understand the business. And it's much easier to train that person, manage them, and then hold them accountable. Um, when it comes to compensation, don't ever build your comp plan, your compensation plan, based on another organization, particularly one that is much larger than yours. You know, oftentimes I see on Facebook within our the real estate investing community is people asking questions about comp plans and then people are, are just naturally their go-givers and they share that with them and then they go and run with that comp plan, but they don't understand that they're paying a, an acquisitions person maybe, you know, 10% uh, of net revenue, but it's a volume-based business that does five, six, seven deals a month um, versus somebody that, you know, might be implementing that comp plan, but they only do one deal a month. Well, 10% of net revenue, if you're doing one deal a month, chances are it's not going to work for a really good salesperson unless you're just doing high, high margin deals. So be careful when you ask people about their KPIs. Be careful when you ask people about comp plans. Just take it with a grain of salt. Understand that everybody's got a different business. We're in different markets and what works for them may not be applicable to your business. So you might have to adjust and modify it. Um, Number three is you do not want to hire a salesperson that wants a salary or is comfortable with the base salary. You want somebody that they don't have a ceiling on their income ability. You want somebody that, you know, they basically kill what they, they, they eat what they kill and they, they want to be fed opportunities. They want quality leads. They don't want to be on the phone sifting and sorting through a bunch of crap leads. You know, they, they want high quality prospects. So, um, feed them quality leads and make sure that you are interviewing and hiring people that are hungry and motivated to go after it. They do, they're they not comfortable with the salary. In fact, they despise a the salary. They want commission. They seek it. And then lastly is, um, and this is a mistake I've seen a lot of people make, is you want to incentivize your salespeople. And one of the ways you do that is through bonuses. Now, I'm a fan if you're going to bonus someone, which I, I, I like, I think it's a good idea, bonus them quarterly not monthly. Now, why is that? You want to bonus them quarterly because it's kind of like the carrot at the end of the stick. You want them striving and going for more because they want that quarterly bonus. If you bonus them monthly and they have a really, really good month, they might take their foot off the gas. They might choose to coast because they just had a good month. You know, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of human nature is that sometimes like, you know, we, we, we knock it out of the park. We have this big victory and then instead of that building on that momentum, we kind of take our foot off the gas. Um, and so one of the ways you can uh, mitigate against that is by bonusing your, your, your salespeople quarterly. So um, I want to end this show here because uh, it, it's getting uh, it's early in the morning now and, and we got we got to wrap up strong our last day of Ascend. Um, some hiring resources. Wisehire.com is a fantastic resource that I've used to hire some salespeople. W I Z E hire.com. What's cool about wise hire is that, um, built into their software, they, uh, they utilize disc and, uh, and, and if you're looking at, if you're looking at somebody's disc assessment, you want a high D and a high I what's cool about wise hire is that they will automatically sort and highlight the people that when they apply, they have to go through the disc assessment. And if they have a high D or a high I, they actually sort them to the top. So that's a really cool resource. Indeed.com is one that I've used in the past. Uh, and then again, don't discount the value of your network, your email list, social network, uh, friends and family, et cetera. And, uh, and then lastly, uh, this is something uh, I learned through uh, a friend of mine, John Martinez, who, who's got some fantastic uh, sales training. If you go to, uh, to flipempire.com forward slash sales or flipempire.com forward slash John, he's got some really good sales training uh, that I've been through and I learned about the OMG sales assessment. So this is a sales assessment that are, is specifically designed for salespeople that can tell you all you need to know about that specific salesperson. You know, what motivates them, how to manage them, uh, how to incentivize them, et cetera. So if you guys go to uh, objectivemanagement.com, objectivemanagement.com, you can check out more about those OMG sales assessments. So 
that's all I got for you. Hopefully this was, uh, this was helpful. My, my voice is starting to give out on me. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, if you've been following me on social media, I've had many of you reach out wanting to, uh, to learn more about Ascend. Really, really appreciate that. Um, just go to ascendyoursuccess.com. Uh, we actually have one seat available at this time. So if you want to learn more about that, ascendyoursuccess.com. So that's all I got. Look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Take care.